Good morning. Today I'll be talking about X-ray film processing and the contents of my lecture include introduction, formation of a radiographic image, formation of a latent image processing, steps in film processing, composition and action of processing solutions, which is your developer and fixer, and the conclusion. So everybody knows the main medium in dental radiography is basically a radiographic film, which is composed of silver halide crystals in a vehicle matrix layered over transparent base. So once X-ray photons exit from a patient's mouth and falls on an X-ray film, there's a lot of changes that act occur, chemical changes that occur within the silver halide crystals, which leads to the formation of an invisible latent image. And this invisible latent image is converted into a visible radiographic image through a series of chemical changes, which is actually facilitated by our processing solutions, which is your developer and your fixer solution. Now, moving on to the formation of this invisible latent image. This is a pictorial representation of a silver halide crystal, which is there in the vehicle matrix. There are multiple silver halide crystals in a vehicle matrix, and the silver halide crystals are mainly silver bromide with a few amount of silver iodide added onto it. Now, other than silver bromide, few sulfur compounds are also added to create surface irregularities, which will in turn increase the photosensitivity of these silver halide crystals. Apart from the sensitivity sites, you also have got free interstitial silver ions within the crystal. The, in a sil single silver halide crystal, there will be multiple sensitivity sites, which is basically multiple irregularities within a single crystal. Now, once an X-ray photon, after interaction with their human body, falls onto the X-ray film, it basically interacts with the bromine ion, compon uh, ion by releasing an electron by the process of Compton as well as photoelectric interactions. This bromine, once it loses its electron, gets converted into a bromine atom, into a neutral bromine atom. And this electron is now free to move anywhere within the crystal lattice and gets deposited within the sensitivity site. Now, once a lot of electrons get come, uh, deposited on multiple sensitivity sites, all these sensitivity sites get a negative charge. Ultimately, this negatively charged sensitivity sites will attract these freely moving interstitial silver ions, which is present within the spaces of the crystal lattice and will lead to the formation of neutral silver atoms in this sensitivity site. So once the sensitivity site has a neutral silver atom deposited, it gets converted from to a latent image site. These reactions happen multiple number of times and a single crystal might have multiple latent images formed. These are all only happening if the X-ray photons come and fall on these silver halide crystals. So the areas where the uh, X-ray photons are not reaching the X-ray films, no such reactions happen and those sensitivity sites remain as such. Now these latent image sites are basically in invisible, but these are the one sites which carry the diagnostic information which is required for us. So to convert this latent image, invisible latent image to a visible latent image is what the entire processing, what occurs in the dark room is for. So processing by definition is basically a collective title which is given to a series of operations which is basically carried out in the dark room to convert this invisible latent image into a visible latent image by a series of chemical changes. So this will occur only in a sensitized or an exposed radiographic film. Now, this is just a pictorial representation of silver halide crystals dispersed in a vehicle matrix, where you can see slightly grayly shaded areas, which is basically a sensitivity sites, which is formed by our sulfur compounds. Now, once the X-ray photons are being, ex uh, for one, are being the X-ray film is being exposed to X-ray photons, there'll be a lot of chemical changes, like I said earlier, by your Compton, as well as photoelectric effects and you will see darker areas of these silver halide crystals, which is basically your invisible latent image site. Now moving on to the processing solutions. Processing solutions come in various forms, in powder forms and ready to use liquid forms as well as in liquid concentrates. These can be mixed and replenished as and when that is required and always make sure the solutions, once they are oxidized or completely lost in action, they are supposed to be replenished according to the usage or according to the timely events. 
Now the various steps in film processing include development, rinsing, fixing, washing as well as drying. So I'll be talking about the composition of the developing solution as well as its action simultaneously. Now developer solution comprises of four components which is your developer, your activator, your preservator and your restrainer and all these are water-based solution. So are all these water soluble compounds so they are all basically dissolved in water. So the developer or the reducing agent which is the first agent is basically nothing but a reducing agent. A reducing agent is an agent which donates electrons. So here the developing agents are phenidoin and hydroquinone and this phenidoin and hydroquinone basically gives electrons to convert the silver ions in an exposed silver halide crystals to convert them into black metallic silver grains. So phenidoin is the first electron donor, which will actually give off an electron to the silver ion to get converted into metallic silver grains. And once this phenidoin gives off an electron, it con gets converted into its oxidized form. Hydroquinone then further goes and gives an electron to this phenidoin to make sure it is being converted back into its original active state. And in turn, hydroquinone turns into an oxidized form. This cycle continues till ultimately hydroquinone is completely uh, dip, uh, ex exhausted and finally there is no conversion of the oxidized phenidone to the original active state of the phenidone. Here always keep in mind only exposed crystals which have latent image in them are only being converted into met black metallic silver grains. The unexposed crystals remain unaffected throughout this reducing process. So as and when there is metallic silver being deposited by the process of reducing, it will slowly start de developing black color tones as well as it will help in building the contrast of the radiographic image. The next, so this is basically the pictorial representation which I showed you earlier. This is just nothing but silver halide crystals with sensitivity sites. Here it is completely sulfur and silver halide crystals with absolutely no chemical change in it. The second image is basically the darkened areas are the areas where you have latent image sites where you have silver, neutral silver atoms deposited on your sensitivity sites, which basically which gets which is further called as your latent image sites. Now, once this sensitized film is basically dipped into a developing solution, the developing agent or the reducing agent will convert the crystals which have these latent image sites into black metallic silver. So that's why you can see those crystals which ever had latent image sites are all black right now and these crystals which were never convert, which never had latent image sites that is which were never exposed remain unaffected during this entire reduction process. Now moving on to the preservative. So any agent needs a preservative because it will get converted into its oxidized form by atmospheric oxygen. So the preservative used in developing solution is sodium sulfide, which helps in protecting the developer from being oxidized. And not only protection from oxidation, it will also combine with any oxidized developer to form colorless compounds. Now you should keep it in mind, oxidized developer solutions are basically brown in color, which can actually create stains on the film and which can hamper in the diagnostic image process formation. So this sodium sulfide combines with the brown oxidized developer to produce colorless soluble compounds. Now the activator, which is basically sodium or potassium hydroxide provides an alkaline pH. Phenidoin and hydroquinone works only in alkaline pH of 10. So we need sodium or potassium hydroxide to create this alkaline medium for this alkaline buffer. And not only that, the other action that this activator has is to soften the gelatin, which will allow these developing agents to easily diffuse and reach the silver halide crystals. Next, we have a restrainer. So I told you initially, developing agents are supposed to be reducing only the exposed silver halide crystals. So the restrainers provide an action of preventing any change of unexposed silver halide crystals into these black metallic uh, silver. So the restrainer used in developing solution is basically potassium bromide 
and benzotriazole. So it basically reduces any effects of this developing agent that is reducing agent on unexposed silver halide. And like I mentioned, all these are water soluble compounds and it is basically developing solution is basically a water soluble solution. And hence we have water as a fifth component. So the summarizing of the entire developing so action is basically the developer should be able to distinguish between your unexposed and your exposed silver halide crystals and create changes only in your exposed silver halide crystals by reducing it into metallic silver. And these metallic silver areas create black color or dark color areas on a dental radiograph, creating the various tones and contrast. Now on prolonged development, in case on ideally the time has not been followed and there isn't because of some sort of error in your processing, there's a prolonged contact with the developer. What will happen is the unexposed silver crystals also that do not contain latent image will also slowly start getting reduced into black metallic silver, but that does not create a dark radiograph. It will just lead to fogging of the entire radiographic image. That's what you have to keep it in mind. Now the second step in processing after developing or dipping the film in the developer solution is rinsing. The need for this rinsing is to remove any amounts of traces of this alkaline activator. Why? Because the fixer basically has got an acidic pH. Also it prevents neutralization. Like I said earlier, it prevents neutralization of this acidic fixer because that is basically an acidic medium. So if you carry over any of the alkaline activator of your developing solution into the fixed solution, it will get neutralized. Also to slow down the developing process, that is any amount of developer that remains onto the film, it should be slowed down and the developing process, the entire developing process should be slowed down. Now the fixed solution again has got four components, clearing agent, you have got an acidifier, you have got a preservative and you have got a hardener. So clearing agent is also called as a fixing agent, which is basically ammonium or sodium thiosulfite. Sorry, sulfate, sorry. So the ammonium or sodium thiosulfate is basically used to dissolve or remove any unexposed silver halide crystals from the emulsion by forming soluble complexes and bringing it out into the fixing solution. Now you should keep in mind once the developing process is over, you have got black metallic silver being deposited in the exposed silver halide crystals and unexposed silver halide crystals interspersed between. These unexposed silver halide crystals will create an opaque image in your completely in your uh, entire radiographic film. So to prevent any sort of opacity in this radiographic, in our radiographic film, you have to remove away all your unexposed silver halide crystals. And this action is being carried about by your ammonium or sodium thiosulfate and not phyte. Okay. So now the same, like I said about in the earlier slide, like prolonged um, the, uh, exposure to your developing solution can create formation of metallic silver even in your unexposed silver halide crystals. Here too, if you prolongly ex immerse your x-ray film into your fixing agent, what will happen is all these metallic silver grains, which is there of your exposed silver crystals, will also slowly start getting dissolved. Ultimately, it will start leading to dissolution of your metallic silver grains and that black color areas will also start getting reduced in contrast. Second is your preservative. Just like I said, preservative in your developer solution is your sodium sulfite. The same way the preservative in your fixing solution is your ammonium sulfite. The easy way to remember is both the preservatives are sulfites. Okay, so preservative here in your fixed solution is ammonium sulfite and it inhibits oxidation of your clearing agent, which is your ammonium thiosulfate. Similarly, in your developer, always try studying, you know, by comparing with both the developer as well as fixer. So developer, your preservative is to prevent oxidation of your developing agent. Here fixer, your preservative is to prevent oxidation of your clearing agent, which is your ammonium thiosulfate. Other than that, it will also combine with any colored oxidized developer which has been carried over and it will remove it from the solution. 
So all these will actually ultimately prevent from creating any sort of stains which will hamper in a formation of an ideal diagnostic image. Second, the third component I told you is an acidifier because your ammonium thiosulfate basically works only in an acidic medium, pH of 4 to 4.5 and which is provided by your acetic acid or your sulfuric acid. So what the acidifier basically does is basically neutralizes any contamination of any alkali of your developing solution which has been carried over. In case if it's been carried over, such contamination is all being neutralized. And not only that, it promotes your acidic medium which will help in apt action of your ammonium thiosulfate and it will also help in good this, uh, this, uh, diffusion of your ammonium thiosulfate into the emulsion of the film. Also, the silver thiosulfate. I told you earlier, the silver thio, the unexposed silver crystals are being dissolved into soluble thiosulfate complexes. And this dissolution, this dissolution back into the solution is aided by your acidifier of your fixer solution. Last component is your hardener, which is your aluminum sulfate or your potassium sul alum. Like I told you in the initial stage where your gelatin matrix, gelatin uh, of your X-ray film is basically softened to facilitate apt dissolution of your uh, components of your developer and fixer into the uh, emulsion. Here we have a hardener which will basically harden the gelatin so that there is no abrasions or it will protect it from any sort of mechanical abrasion up to an extent. Like similar to your developing solution, your fixing solution is also water soluble and all these components are basically dissolved in water. So to summarize the entire fixing process, basically fixing removes unexposed silver halide crystals. Like I told you earlier, unexposed silver halide crystals are converted into silver thiosulfate complexes and from that emulsion it is basically being carried out into the solution. And then wherever these silver halide, unexposed silver halide crystals were being present, all those areas will get converted into white or clear areas. And then these black metallic silver areas which were formed only during developing will remain unchanged. There is no change that occurs in your back black metallic silver areas during the process of fixing. However, on prolonged, I told you on prolonged exposure to fixing solution, that is if a film is uh, dipped into a fixing solution for a prolonged time, these black metallic silver grains will also slowly start getting dissolved into the solution. And the last uh, function of your fixing solution is to harden and shrink the film in a emulsion. The last step again, like between your developing and fixing, you have a rinsing. Here it's called as washing because it's not just rinsing, it's completely washing away of any amount of developer as well as fixing solution. So it is washed preferably in running tap water and it's just to remove any amount of trace amounts of thiosulfate ions and silver thiosulfate complexes, which if not removed, can lead to the formation of brown colored stains on a longer period. So films which have not been washed properly over a period of one week or over a period of one month will turn into yellow stained films, which is actually a radiographic fault and which is actually not ideally recommended when you do a properly processed and developed film. So this is ultimately what occurs when you have a good processed film, good exposure as well as good processed film. You have areas of white, you have got areas of black. So the areas of black are the areas where you have a lot of metallic silver grains that has been deposited because these are the areas where a lot of latent image has been formed. And the areas of white are the areas where a, none of the X-ray photons have been able to reach the film emulsion. So none of the X-ray silver halide crystals have been converted into latent image sites and all these are washed away. Now on the differential exposure and your differential deposition of silver halide, metallic silver grains and your clearing away, that is when actually you have your different con contrast of your black and silver, uh, black and white areas. 
So the areas wherever it is much more white, no radiogram, no X-ray photons have been been able to penetrate to those areas. These are the areas where you have got your silver amalgam or your restorations or your crowns and areas which are completely black are areas which do not have anything to block the sil uh, X-ray photons on reaching to the silver emulsion. So when you see your sinuses or you see your areas in between the teeth, all these areas, the areas between the teeth have the maximum black color because maximum metallic silver grains are being deposited there because there's nothing to stop it from uh, reaching onto the silver emulsion. But however, if you see onto the areas where you have your sinuses, your pulp chambers, all these compared to your enamel dentine, they appear comparatively black. Why? Because they're completely, uh, they are not composed of any mineral content. Your pulp does not have any mineral content. Your sinuses are basically air-filled cavities. So these all allow X-ray photons to pass through them. But if you always ask why does the sinuses have a shade of white is because you have your alveolar bone. The sinuses are basically situated within your alveolar bone. So X-ray photons basically have to interact with your alveolar bone pass through the empty sinuses and then reach your emulsion film. So you have a bit of interactions that will occur within your alveolar bone. And this creates a sort of shade of your white shade when you compare it with the area where it is completely white. So I hope this is completely understood as to the reason why you have white color areas and why you have black color areas in your radiograph. The same way, like white is called as radio opaque and black is called as radio lucent. In future, you're supposed to be using the terms of radio opaque and radio lucent and not white and black color areas. So to conclude, excellent dental radiographs actually prove as an adjunct or an aid to improve patient diagnosis. So once a patient diagnosis, diagnosis is being improved, you can have better formulation of treatment plan, which will ultimately lead to better patient care. This need requires proper film exposure as well as optimum film processing. And for a radio, for a dentist to have a good radiographic image, ideal knowledge about the entire film uh, latent image formation and the ideal processing procedures are essential to create consistent good quality radiographs so that there is it's always, it can always aid in your diagnosis and your treatment plan and not just give you the adequate amount of information which is already gotten from your clinical, from clinical observation. So this, hopefully this class has been explained in a very simple way and this should be there always in your mind when you go to your dark room as to what actually happens when you dip your film into a developer solution, when you rinse it, why is there a need for rinsing that too for 30 seconds? And why do you need to wash your film adequately after fixing? Thank you.